Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Edoblox. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can listen to events with Web3. First, let's understand what's an Ethereum event. An event is a piece of data that is emitted by a smart contract in a transaction. So once an event has been created, it's stored inside the blockchain. But the difference with a normal variable is that a smart contract can only create an event, but it cannot read it or modify it. However, any entity outside the blockchain can read these events. Because events are immutable, they are a good fit if you want to describe data changes. For example, in ERC20 token, every time a token is transferred from an address to an order, a transfer event is emitted. All right, so let's demonstrate how we can listen to event with some code. So I've prepared an example project with Truffle. If you don't know what is Truffle, check my intro video. So inside my smart contract project, let's see our smart contract. First, we define our event and all its field. So it has three fields, so an integer, that's an ID, another integer, that's the date, because in Solidity, dates are represented as integer, and finally, a string. By the way, I'll explain later what is this index keyword. And next, we have another integer that we're going to use to populate the ID of each event. So below, we have an emit function where we are going to emit our event. So we need to pass all the value for all the field of our event. So next ID, then the current date. And finally, we just forward the string that we receive as an argument. All right, so now let's open the script file where I've already instantiated Web3 as well as a contract object so that we can interact with our smart contract. So there are three different methods to read events. So we're going to see all of them. So let's start by the easiest one. And for that, we need to execute the emit event function of our smart contract in a transaction. Let's wait contract dot method dot emit event and as a string argument we're gonna pass it hey right and after the hey we need to send a transaction with the send method here it's very important to understand that we need to use the send method and not the call method. The send method send a transaction and sending a transaction is the only way to actually create the event on the blockchain. Right, so let's specify the sending address. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And we're gonna put the receipt of this transaction in a, in a, a variable. So I've already explained what is a receipt in previous video of this series on Web3, but basically with a receipt, you can get some more information about your transaction, including any events, if any. So let's console log this, console log the receipt dot events. Okay, so now let's start a truffle console with a truffle develop command so it's going to start a, a local instance of ganache and with this we'll be able to deploy our smart contract and execute our script okay so let's go back to the term the other terminal let's execute our script node index.js and we can see our receipt here so we are accessing the events key inside our receipt and for each event you will see a key for for your events for example our event is called my event and here we can see all the info about my event so transaction hash block hash address of the smart contract but the most interesting here is the return values thing so you can see all the field of your event as a number indices, but you can also see the name of the field as a normal string. So ID, date, and here for our value, we can see, hey. So typically is this part of the transaction receipt that you will want to extract. So let's go back to our script. So this method of reading an event was pretty easy. We just sent a transaction and as soon as it was mined, then right away, 
we were able to read the value of our event in the receipt. Cool. So next, we're going to see an other way of reading event because the problem of the method I just show you is you have to be the one who actually send the transaction if you want to, to read the event. But in most cases, it's not going to happen this way. In most cases, you will want to read events that were created by other people transactions. So we need a way to just read all the events. And for that, we're going to use a method that is called get past events. So let's define a result variable and we're going to use our contract object. Then we can call the get pass events method. Then we're going to specify the name of our event. So my event. Then we're going to specify a filter object where we can customize exactly the events that we want to read. So just to make it simple, we're going to pass an empty object here. And just after I'm going to explain you how we can be more granular in our search. And after that, we're going to console log the result. Oh, and we also need to await that because this is an async operation. Actually, I like to emit several events so that I can show you that we can read all of them. So let me send another transaction to the emit event function so that we create two events. By the way, if you are wondering how comes I can code so fast, it's because I use Vim and it gives me some super Jedi power. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just accelerating the speed in my video editing software. All right, so let's make sure that I console log the result. Yes. So let's save this and let's execute the script again. Okay, so let's see what we got back from this get past even function. So we got an array of events. So here we can see the name of the event. It's my event and we can see, hey, hey, but we cannot see just, hey, we just see the second event. Mm hmm. How comes? Let's go back to our script. So in the guest the get past event function, I told you that here we can pass a filter. And in this filter, one of the field is the block from which we want to read the event. So if we don't specify any block, by default, it's just going to take the latest block of the blockchain, so the block of the latest transaction, but that means you're just going to get one event. So if you want to have all event, then you need to put the block when you deploy the spot contract. So you can get this block number in your transaction receipt when you deploy your spot contract, but you can make it even more simple and get the event from the first block of the blockchain. The only disadvantage is that on mainnet, it can get slower if you do this, because now the Ethereum node has to scan all the blockchain since the beginning. So here, let's indicate that we want to read from the block zero. Right, so now let's execute the script again. And this time we're supposed to see two event. And yes, actually we see more than two events because we created some, uh, some events even before. So you know what, this is confusing. So let's restart our Ganache instance. So we're gonna have a, a fresh instance of our spot contract with a clean state. Uh, so let's deploy it. Okay, let's go back to the other terminal. Let's execute our script again. And this time we'll have two event. Yeah, so here we have our array and here we can see the return value. And inside we can see our value field. It's hey, and if we scroll down, then we can see the other event with hey, hey. So everything is working fine. So there is another trick that I want to show you with get past event. Actually, you can specify another key in your filter to just filter some specific event that has some specific field. Let's specify this with the filter key. And here you will specify the name of the field that you want to filter. For example, we can filter on value. And after you put the value that you want to filter on, so here you can put Hey, and if I wanted to filter on an other field, for example, a date uh, here, I could have 
specific timestamp, for example. So this means I want all the event from block zero where the value field is equal to hey and the date field is equal to this. Another possibility to specify your filter is instead of a value here, you can specify an array. So here, if I put, I want hey and hey, hey, then this means a or condition. Here, I want all the events whose value field is either hey or a, a. but you also have this end condition on the date. So n, but in this direction is or. But you know what? Let's make it simple. We're just going to filter on hey. And by the way, I'm not even sure that we can actually filter with the value field. Let me explain you why. So yeah, I told you before that I need to explain you this, this index keyword. So you need to put the index keyword if you want to use the field in a filter. For the string field, we don't have the index keyword, so we can't put it in a filter. So let's add the index keyword and we will redeploy our smart contract. And by the way, you have a limit of three index field in your event. So choose wisely. All right, so let's save this. Let's redeploy our smart contract. Okay, so now our filter in our script is fine. Oh, here we need a comma. Okay, let's save this. Let's go back to the terminal. Let's execute the script and we don't find anything. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't want to waste time to debug this, but you get the idea of how a filter works. So, so far I show you two ways of reading events from a smart contract. The first way is by reading the transaction receipt after you send a transaction. And the second way is by calling the guest past event function. But in some cases, you might need to receive the events in real time. And with the guest past event function, it's not very convenient because you need to keep pulling the blockchain for new events. There, there is actually a third way to read events by using a WebSocket. So you just need to do your setup once and whenever there will be a new event, you will receive it on the front end and you'll be able to update your UI. So let's see how this work. So let me get rid of this get past event thing here. Next, we're going to use the contract object dot events, then the name of our event. So my event, then you're going to pass a filter object. So all the rules that I've shown you before for get past event, it also apply for this filter object. And then this has an event emitter API. So you receive some event and you subscribe to them. And the event that we want is data when we receive a new data. And this is going to give us the event and we're going to console log it. When you first run this script, then you receive the two event. But in order to show you the real time feature, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the second event after and in between, I'm going to post the script actually with this custom function. So I create a new promise. So sorry, I'm going to go a bit quick here because this is not a video about promise, but basically the function I'm doing here a lot to pause for a couple of seconds. So set time out. Then this is going to call the resolve function. And then we wait for yeah two seconds, for example. Okay. Okay. So now let's run our script. First event, second event. So you saw it happening in real time. So here, that was our first event with the written values. So this time our string hasn't been decoded. It is in hexadecimal form, but you can easily convert it to a, a normal string by using a, a utility function. And here we have our second event with also the return value object here. And so now if we were to send another transaction, then you will see an other event appearing here. We are really receiving our events in real time. But this is only possible because we are using this special WebSocket provider. By the way, if you want an easy way to memorize all the things you need to know about Web3 as a blockchain developer, make sure to get your hand on my free cheat sheet for Web3. You can get it by following the link in the description. 
So let's have a quick recap of the three different ways that we can read events from a spot contract with Web3. So the first way is just by reading the transaction receipt. So this is very easy, but it only works if you are the one sending the transaction to the spot contract. The second way is by calling the guest past events function uh, on your contract object. And this way you can get all the events that occurred in the past. And the last way is by using a WebSocket provider, you can get events in real time. If you don't know which one to choose, I would recommend get past events. That's probably the most useful and still quite simple. That's it for this video on how you can listen to smart contract events with Web3. In the next video, I'll show you how you can connect to a public network like Mainnet or Robsten or Kovan by using the Infra API. Thanks for watching. Bye.